Hi everyone, this is our channel, Meet the Real Story. Please, like, share and subscribe. Hi, I'm Gamila. Have you ever experienced a life problem? I know everyone has their own problems, but imagine you had to hide something all your life. Do you know what it feels like? If not, let me tell you. My name is Gamila. It means beautiful in Arabic, and I really am beautiful, or so I've been told. But I have a problem. I always wear a glove on my left hand anywhere I go because I'm too embarrassed to show it to anyone. This has become my life problem. You see, I've had seven fingers on my left hand since birth. My family couldn't afford a surgery to remove these extra two fingers. It would have cost a lot of money and I would have had to travel abroad because we didn't have clever doctors or good hospitals in my area. So I've been wearing a glove on my left hand since I was young as a temporary solution for this problem. People always ask me about the glove, but I never answer. I just say that my fingers get cold. You would see me in the summer wearing a short, sleeveless blouse and a glove on my left hand. There were a lot of things I had to give up because of my hand. Once, I wanted to play gymnastics. My mom was okay with it, so I went to many places to train, but they all refused to accept me because of my seven-fingered hand, which they considered to be a problem. At school, my classmates would laugh and ridicule me a lot, so I never had a lot of friends, just a few. I got into the college of my dreams. I thought that people might stop this bullying, so I considered taking off the glove. But I was afraid, because I was going to join a new society, so I didn't. I went with the glove instead. I was surprised at the amount of bullying at college, more than I had ever seen. It was a good thing that I decided to wear my glove, there were a lot of bullies there. Then, something happened. It became a turning point in my life. One time, while I was standing and speaking with my friends, one of them suddenly pulled off my glove. This glove was old and wasn't very tight on my hand. I had been intending to buy a new one after school. But they all discovered my secret. Some were astonished, while others started making fun of me and bullying me. I stopped going to university for a whole week. People blame me for something that wasn't my fault, but that was the story of my life. If I hid away now, I'd be in this mess forever. So I decided never to wear that glove again. I decided to face my fears. I am beautiful enough to live a good life. I decided to ignore all the bullies and take care of myself. I went to my college. I didn't care about people's opinions. I focused on my studies, had great success and proved to myself and to others that I was not disabled. The disabled can't think or succeed. Later, when I was attending a lecture by a famous doctor, he noticed my hand and offered to operate on it and make it look normal. This surgery would be the first of its kind in my country, and I accepted. When I saw my hand after the surgery, I couldn't believe myself. Bullying can ruin people's lives. But as they say, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Hello everyone, I'm Lauren. Did you ever wonder what it would be like to have your life completely destroyed by someone close to you? Ever thought about what you would do then? I didn't have time to think, because that's exactly what happened to me. It all started two years ago. I lived a quiet life with my mom and dad and my sister. I loved my family. We were always together. We were happy until that fateful day. My dad got fired from his work a big company. He had worked there for 20 years. The only money we had then was what he had managed to save over the years. Finding a new job wasn't easy. It was a hard time for all of us, especially my dad. He was becoming desperate. At times, he just sat there, quietly, deep in thought, and I rarely saw him smile since. One late night, we were still up waiting for him when he walked through the door. But something was different. He wasn't walking straight. It was the first time in my life seeing him drunk. I decided to take matters in my own hand. I started job hunting. I was lucky enough to find something suitable at a startup company. The pay was good enough. And the more I worked, the more I earned. I was trying my best to get our life back. I was giving it all I've got. My dad started asking me for money. I was more than happy to give him what he needed. I didn't even ask what it was for. Then he started asking for more. He came late almost every night, and he was never awake in the morning. It seemed like we hadn't talked together for ages. 
Then, money started disappearing from my purse. I got home from work one night. It had been a long day, and I was really tired. I put my bag in my room, and I went to the kitchen to find something to eat. I made myself a sandwich, then took it back to my room. But when I got to the door, I saw a shadow moving inside. I thought everyone was asleep, so I opened the door slightly and looked inside. I couldn't believe what I saw. My dad was standing over my bag, and my wallet was in his hand. He found no money in it, so he threw it on the bed and started going through my purse. At that moment, my mom came down the stairs. She had my dad's shirt in her hands and a small pack of white powder. I looked at her face. Her eyes were filled with tears. I tried to speak, but found nothing to say. My dad came out of my room. He saw us standing there. Suddenly, everything changed. He tore the shirt and the pack from my mom's hands. He was hysterical. He started breaking things around him. My mom and I were too scared to move. But then my sister came running down the stairs. He pulled her towards him and held a knife to her throat. He threatened to kill her if we didn't give him money. Without a moment's thought, I did what he asked. Things only got worse. Nothing was ever enough. He asked for more and more money. And if I refused, he'd get violent, beating up anyone in his path. I couldn't stand by and watch, so I would just give him what he wanted, until I decided enough was enough. He barged down the stairs one evening and asked for all the money I've got. I told him we had expenses to pay, the rent, school fees, but none of it mattered to him. He asked me again for the money and threatened me if I didn't do what he asked. I refused. He hit me so hard that I crashed my head against the wall and fell to the floor, bleeding. Everything went dark. My mom took me to different hospitals, and I had to do a lot of checkups and tests. But all the doctors said the same thing, that this was it. I was sentenced to live my life in darkness, never to see the light again. Bumping my head against the wall was one of the reasons, but apparently my psychological state played a huge role in my recovery. The doctors suggested that I'd be taken to a psychiatrist. My dad felt sorry for what he had done to me. He quit the drugs and alcohol, tried to be proper, but it was because of him that I was in this state. I didn't know if I could ever find it in myself to forgive him. I was torn inside. He was my dad, but I couldn't forget what had happened. I stopped talking shortly after, and he left, disappearing from our lives. No one knew where he was or what he was doing. A year had passed, and he came home. He sounded good, kind of like how he was before. He's trying to make up for what he had done. But to me, nothing he does makes a difference anymore. I'm still in the dark. That's something I'm going to have to live with my whole life. I can't change that. What do you think I should do? Before this summer, I had zero experience with dating apps. Tinder wasn't even released until two years after my long-term relationship ended. During seven years of my relationship, I had played around with my friend's apps but never swiped left or right. Finding myself suddenly single at the beginning of the summer and in desperate need of distraction, I dove headfirst into the pool of online dating. I started with Tinder because my town is too small for anything else and my cold dead heart wanted casual dates and nothing serious. And that's the whole purpose of Tinder. Tinder met most of my expectations. I went on a handful of dates, met some cool guys, and some not-so-cool guys. I even hung out with a few truly interesting people, like a radio DJ who runs a wedding business on the side. What I did not expect from Tinder, however, was how most of these interactions started to make me feel good about myself. I mean really good about myself. Like every woman in the world, I have never been happy with my body. At a size 10, I'm labeled plus size, and I've worn glasses on and off throughout my whole life. When I'm out with my girlfriends, I'm never the girl who is hit on, flirted with, or even picked up. Ever since I hit puberty and became aware of attractive versus unattractive, I've thought of myself as filling the role of the fat friend who just sits back and smiles. Obviously, I've had boyfriends. But they've always been my friends first, so when they said you're gorgeous, what I heard was, 
I found you gorgeous only after getting to know you. I didn't immediately think you were pretty. I know that having someone attracted to your personality is way more important than thinking you're cute. But I wouldn't hate having just one guy who doesn't know me at all tell me that I'm attractive. Friends, family, and boyfriends, I don't believe. But a total stranger? That person I might actually listen to. This brings us back to Tinder. One of my first nights using the app, a friend and I sat on my back deck and decided who to swipe left and right on. With each it's a match, we laughed and looked into the guy's profile a bit more. After the third match, I said, These guys are just judging me on my appearance, right? And my friend nodded. So they're only swiping because they think I'm cute? Or are they just swiping on every girl? We concluded that obviously some of the guys were swiping right on every girl. But the chances of every single guy doing that were slim. We swiped some more. When I started matching with guys who were classically good looking, well, I won't lie, that felt really good. A hot guy actually thinks that I'm attractive? What? No. How could that be? Then the messages started. Some guys went right in with, you're really pretty. Others went in for a conversation first before giving out compliments here and there. I know that this is how people operate on Tinder, but keep in mind that I'm not used to anything. It wasn't until I started meeting with these guys that I wondered, can Tinder actually boost my self-esteem? Two guys asked how someone as pretty as me was still single. I went on a date with one guy who told me in Spanish that I was beautiful. Another guy who I'd met up with a few times asked me, are you looking for something serious? I laughed like a loon in response. It wasn't the question that surprised me. It was the fact that I was coming for an incredibly attractive, incredibly fit guy. Because yes, I'm being shallow and only swiping right on guys who I find physically attractive. When I was done laughing, I said something awkward like, Oh, maybe? I mean, I'm not against it. My mind, however, was saying, Are you serious? Have you seen yourself? Have you seen me? I was in fact not attractive, but I simply knew how to dress well. I retreated into my unhealthy shell. Soon after that guy, I hung out with a sweet, nerdy medical student who was in town on a vacation. We got along well. The next day as we met up again, he seemed shocked that I was on a second date. He kept repeating, You're just so beautiful. I never get to do things like this. I don't know how to respond to compliments. And the medical boy shook his head. He said, Don't do that. Don't body shame yourself. You're so attractive. Have you seen yourself? You're gorgeous. Something about that guy made my typical self-hate thoughts start to lose hold. Again, I know that this is the type of stuff people say on Tinder. But let's be honest, why put in the extra effort? Unless it's true. Somewhere between the casual Tinder chats, the handful of dates, my mind circled a new thought. Am I attractive? I stared at myself in my full-length mirror. I tried to see what these guys saw. Guys who did not know me at all. Guys who are not being swayed by my personality. And guys who have no reason to compliment me because I'm not looking for another relationship anytime soon. Suddenly I started to see it. Where I used to see unsightly lumps and a stomach I sucked in before turning off the lights, now I see a healthy, curvy, and dare I say it, slender body. Friends, family, and boyfriends have always told me that I'm attractive, but it wasn't until these strangers started repeating it over and over that I actually started to hear it. So which is boosting my self-esteem? Tinder or just plain dating? Or are they working in with one another because without Tinder, I probably wouldn't be dating at all? Romantically, I tend not to put myself out there. I typically wouldn't approach a guy and try flirting with him, for fear of rejection, of course. With Tinder, however, just matching with someone seems to lessen the fear of rejection. Whether you matched with them because they're genuinely interested, or you matched because they're saying yes to everyone, 
Seeing that it's a match message eases a tiny bit of the tension that goes into dating. Whether it's thanks to Tinder or not, in the past few months I've discovered newfound confidence. When someone compliments me, I say thank you instead of responding with a self-hatred joke. When I meet a date for the first time, I work at being my usual chatty, sarcastic self rather than being shy and quiet. I have flirted with guys and even gave a random musician my number. For once in my life, I feel like I'm someone worth dating rather than fearing my significant other might be too good for me. Did Tinder give me this confidence boost? Or am I just getting older and wiser? I don't know for sure. But what I do know is that I'm not going to stop online dating anytime soon.